In this safety video, you will learn about rigging and the procedures for safe use including rigging, inspection, qualification, and rated capacity and identification. The following requirements apply to slings used in conjunction with other material handling equipment to move materials by hoisting. A qualified person must inspect the slings and all fastenings and attachments, by hand each day and on each shift for damage or defects before use. It is necessary to conduct additional inspections during sling use, where service conditions warrant. Slings and hooks that are damaged or defective should never be utilized. Rigging equipment that is damaged or defective should be discarded. During hoisting operations, qualified riggers must be present. Riggers attach and detach lifting equipment to loads or lifting devices. To be considered a qualified rigger, the person must have received training by the employer to perform specific rigging tasks and possess a recognized degree, certificate, or professional standing, or has extensive knowledge, training, and experience, and can successfully demonstrate the ability to solve problems related to rigging loads. Rated Capacity and Identification Rigging equipment must have permanently affixed and legible identification markings, as prescribed by the manufacturer, indicating the recommended safe working load. Rigging must not be loaded more than its recommended safe working load, as prescribed on the identification markings by the manufacturer. It cannot be used without affixed, legible identification markings. Chains, wire ropes, synthetic or metal web slings, shackles, or any other lifting attachments without permanently affixed and legible identification markings prescribed by the manufacturer must not be utilized. When not in use, rigging equipment needs to be removed from the immediate work area to avoid a hazard to employees. It is necessary to use tag lines unless their use creates an unsafe condition. Hooks used in the connection between the hoist line and the personnel platform, including hooks on overhaul ball assemblies, lower load blocks, bridle legs, or other attachment assemblies or components, must be of a type that can be closed and locked, eliminating the throat opening and closed and locked when attached. Suspended loads must be kept clear of all obstructions, and all employees must be kept clear of loads about to be lifted and of suspended loads. Shock loading is prohibited. Chain or wire rope slings must not be compromised, including knots, bolts, other makeshift devices. Slings must not be kinked or knotted. Slings used in a basket hitch must balance the loads to prevent slippage. Slings must be padded or protected from the sharp edges of their loads. Never put your hands between the sling and its load while the sling has been secured around it. A sling must not be pulled from under a load when the load is resting on the sling, and damage may result. Set the slings correctly to avoid slippage. Rigging must be used and maintained according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Hooks and shackles must only be used in the manner recommended by the manufacturer. Proof coil steel chain, also known as common or hardware chain, or other chains, not recommended for slinging or hoisting by the manufacturer, must not be used for hoisting purposes. Wrought iron chains in constant use must be annealed or normalized at intervals not exceeding six months when recommended by the manufacturer. Manufacturers of chains must be consulted for recommended procedures for annealing or normalizing. Alloy chains must not be annealed. Deformed hooks or rings must be replaced or repaired and reshaped under proper metallurgical control and proof tested. Proper annealing or normalizing procedures are done only following the chain manufacturer's specifications must be followed. Proof testing. Unique custom design grabs, hooks, clamps, or other lifting accessories for such units as modular panels, prefabricated structures, and similar materials must be marked to indicate the safe working loads and be proof tested to 125% of the rated load before use. This concludes our safety training.